Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. Okay, a bit of an update. So I've got my beams all kind of uh, squared in there, how I, how I like them. Nice and straight. Got that one in nice and straight as well. Um, I've started on the, on the shelving. So I've cut this with the 45, I've cut it there with the 45. Um, I've braced it up, I've drilled a couple of pilot holes, so I've got one there, there, and there. And I've done the same over the other side. So basically the weight is going down. There is a slight overhang here and I do have it just one or two degree um, on a backward slant as well. So when the weight is on it, it's less likely to come forward. It's you know going to be going backwards. I've also introduced the gap here as well. So I've got it off the actual structure. And that's about all I've got time for today because uh, I've been out uh, outfitting locks all day. I've got uh, the first beam, sorry, the first one here, so I've got three sides. I'm about to cut this fourth side. As you can see, I've also backed it off uh, this wall here, so I've left about 20 mil. What's 20 mil between friends? It's nothing. And I've done that deliberately just in case anything moves. Uh, this being glass and aluminium, I don't want any pressure or anything going back onto this. Uh, there is a bit of a gap going down there. Look, I can't really do much about that. Hopefully when it's when this is hopefully when this is all nicely painted and this is nicely painted that gap won't be too noticeable um i've decided i'll probably go with some sort of tinted perspex to reflect uh the same feel as this glass here and here also when you're on the phone it creates a sound barrier bouncing it back so that that way if somebody's over the other side of the desk you're not going to be you know hearing as much so kind of a cubicle um cub cubulizing the sound uh, is what I'm going for. Originally we had these desks, but as you can see these desks, um, the top of them is good, but these boards, this grey colour thing, I think I'm just going to piss all that off. Since I'm using this steel, I'm going to so much trouble and all these, each, like, when I thought oh, I'll just knock it up, you know, it was an under-guesstimation on my behalf because it's taken me days just to get each one of these blue, blue bits in, you know, weld them all up, get the welds good and all the rest and uh, get the technique back again, make sure I'm using the right rods, right amperage, not too hot, not too cold with the arc welder. Um, I'm happy with them. Look, could have been better on the welds. If I was marking myself as a TAFE teacher, I probably would be around the 60, late 60s, early 70s on the welds. So, you know, and I'm pretty critical on myself, so I know I can do better. I've just whacked a bit of putty on because once they're sanded and they're painted, it's got to be like a stage three grind. That's what I'm kind of hoping for. And with this black um, to go over the top, I'm hoping it's going to hide any imperfections. I've sanded this one down to see my low spots because I'm actually going to hit that again with the paint. And then I'll hit it with some wet and dry. Then I'll hit it with a buff because uh, these surfaces here is what I'm going to be looking at. So I, I kind of want them like um, a mirror finish on the paint. The straight finish off off the can is there, you can see. You can see a little bit of a shine going on. So it's not too bad. As far as attaching these shelvings, um, what I was thinking about doing is one or two things. One, I can bolt straight through. Um, so this side will be on this side, you know, bolted straight through. Or I could use nut certs and go in that way. I did want to make it removable so that if anything changes or if I need to make any modifications I don't have to pull out my grinder and cut. I could just unbolt a particular section and re-bolt it back in once repaired or to do any modifications or further installations or any ductwork or anything that might come along um, such as we've got up there we've got the water line for the AC going you know if that was to break or leak then you know I might need to remove a shelf so you never know you never know the electrical is all in pretty rock solid so these ones up the top they're actually for the outside for the pool to put uh, floodlights there this one here it just seemed to be the strongest place to mount it so that'll break off and uh, be some nice light for this cubicle uh, possibly on another switch it's already on a switch now but it's on three of them so it might even be a separate switch um, or a dimmer or you know selection selector of lights um, the beams came up pretty good. I've had to use 6 mm packer there and 6 mm packer there, so I guess my calculations were slightly off, but I mean a piece of steel underneath is not going to go anywhere, it's just going to compress. Um, I have to check out my 
piping diagrams. Uh, I took photos before we laid the slab because I'm going to make sure I'm not drilling into anything. I know that it's, the concrete is really thick there, but I do know there's a water pipe coming right through here. There's also another pipe coming along here, um, which goes to this drain here, and then comes along here. So I have to really, really, really pull out my tape measure and make sure I don't drill into that. That would be a nightmare if I did. And if I was to drill into it, well, I'm just gonna have to plug the hole and, um, you know, work around it. But I've, I've got to check the measurements. It should be all right. Should be all right. Once I measure it out, do a string line and find out exactly where they are. That's why I took photos. So anytime you're gonna lay a slab and there's something underneath, pipes or anything, take hundreds of photos with measurements, rulers everywhere, left and right. So you can re-identify it later. That's my tip of the day. And, uh, as for the rest of it, well, it looks like we're on track. Um, this level is coming out to surface. Uh, the door will be fitted slightly above this, so this will be part of the front. The next level will be slightly back uh, because the door's using 30 or 35 mil. So basically, uh, the next shelf will be slightly back by 35. So that, in theory, this will be my front edge um, that's going to be flat. The door, this. The top rafter is all going to be flat to this to this edge here in theory uh, when i check it out with the string line from there to there to there we're on the money and um we're also on the money left and right with this gauge this gauge is just from bunnings it's just a cheapie but uh as you can see oh, it's moved a little bit i have to fix that there you go that's where we want it right in the middle it's just this footing here um, could be the concrete, but it most likely is the plate, the plate there. When I was welding, it got so hot, the plates actually buckled. So they're a bit like a banana now. They're only there to distribute load. So once, um, once they're done bolted in, they'll probably pull down just a fraction. But unfortunately, you know, they're, if they're bent, they're bent. Only a couple of options. Hit it with the heat and try and straighten it up. And that's uh, 10 mil of mild steel, so I don't like my chances. Or cut it off and do it again and you know i've already got them welded up and all the rest so i'm gonna i'm just gonna roll with the punches on that one okay leave your comments down below what you think of my shelving um it should be should be okay by the time it's finished um ideally what i want to see is pretty much no beams going up but I'm, I'm gonna see them um this side here too i might have to introduce or you know see which beams i'm using for that but i want um a very small roof along this black section coming out in a box just a box and i want um i want it to have some wood um lacquered wood lacquered wood with black shining gloss nicely hinged and then uh what i'll do is i'll use my um man lift see this lift here it's this one we're going to use this um to access up there that way when you're up high and this is about uh what are we three three and a half meters when you're up three and a half meters and you need to get a box down, the safest way to do it is with uh, one of these man lifts or platforms. You know the crown lifts that you see in Bunnings? They're one of them and that's what we've got there. So that's the reason we've got it is because then we can use all this nine meters of cubic space. It was about eight meters or seven meters or whatever, but we can use it safely, get up there and get down from there and retrieve a box without being on a ladder, hanging over, balancing and all this sort of rubbish, which is just unsafe. So this seems to be the safest way and the best way to actually use the space. Although it's a lot of work, although it's, um, you know, it's expensive for the steel, um, and it's a lot of work, cutting, welding, grinding, painting, bolting, and all that sort of stuff. I think long-term it's gonna be the better option. And I think it's gonna be the better option when you compare it to what you're looking at beforehand. You're looking at uh, Calibon steel, steel top hats, uh, fly bracing, conduit, and brackets, and gal, I mean, all that's a bit bit nasty look at it's not very homely feel so by creating this box from here all the way along uh, should make it a lot nicer should make it a lot nicer for the desk area below it as well and then once that's done we move over to here and then once that's done we're going to move over to here and this is going to be the big one we're, we're going even higher on this side and we're going to split this up into a few different sections uh, hopefully there is piping in the corner there so we can get that coffee machine get a nice uh, glass fridge going over there as well a bit of a, a lunch um, sink uh, you know for a coffee and stuff like that and then over here um, I've decided that I'm going to put a big 
box uh, cupboard. So it can house things like the hoist uh, motor, the engine crane, car tools, internal shelving, uh, all the electrics will be kept out of the way. And yeah, so this is the stage we're at now. And each section, no word of a lie, is going to probably take me about two weeks. And cost-wise, not including labour, we're probably up for about a thousand bucks per cube which I guess is okay. I mean, if I was to buy this type of shelving here, so this shelving here, they're 200, 250 bucks a piece, and that's as high as they go. Unless you get the bigger ones, then you double the price. So if you're talking 400 bucks to, for that sort of stuff, it looks nasty, it's not to size. And, you know, if you're gonna have that above a, an office bench, it's gonna look absolutely shithouse. So that's, uh, that's the idea. If we have to go with a whole hog, I have to go a whole hog. And if I have to spend two weeks a section, then that's all I can kind of do. Leave your comments down below if you've got any ideas or any thoughts on uh, improvements, changes, modifications, or recommendations. I would, you know, I'd love to hear it. I'm just making this off the fly. Um, that's my point of origin over here where this string is. And I can show you that. Everything's a mess. We've got crap everywhere. But once this is in, it shouldn't be so crappy. And that's the saw I've been using, the bandsaw, the Viva bandsaw. Pretty happy with it, actually. Okay, so if you can see that, we're on the money. Give or take a couple of mil, we're on the money. So the whole idea is, because of the got beams, I thought, well, you've got two reasons for going for this type of length. The first one is you want storage as much as you can, especially when you're putting up this type of form, uh, this type of formwork. You want as much storage as you can to maximise you know, the value in making the shelf. So um, that's the first option there. Section, second op, second method of thought is that I want to keep it in, in line. So, you know, these beams here with this line of window go in line. The third one is arm length. Like if I'm standing here, you can see it here. That's about as far as I can get. I can lean over and touch it. But, you know, if my arm can't reach it, then it's no good. So that's where we're up to. Um, as far as this side, this side will be fine. I'm going to box it up to that beam there and then carry it on over the door and stuff like that. There might be an automatic door going in here. Uh, I'm hoping. I've just got to find a motor. If anyone knows of a motor um, for that, it's, uh, what are they, 850, 900 doors. I mean, I'm a bit limited on the side, but it'll probably have to be outdoor mounted. I'll probably have to do some sort of... Um, weatherproofing to the motor look it's really hard to find the uh, aluminium for that so i might even leave it manual too uh, because a lot of wind comes this direction and um you know a man one manual door is not going to really hurt me uh, that one's going to go automatic and this one will go automatic too they're just hinge doors so you know they're not too bad i've seen the motors for about three three four hundred bucks so that's fairly decent this section here um, I'm still, oh yeah, so with the desks being here, I've decided to, I'll get back to this, this board right here, I'm going to get rid of all of that, these legs and all are going straight to the metal recycling person, I'm going to come out here with a bit of this 75 by 75, drop it straight down, put an adjustable foot on it, and uh, use some inserts here, and make a bracket, which is actually adjustable, and I'm going to actually just uh, mount the desks straight on that. Now the desks will be... Um, how you say, like mounted here and mounted here. So I need to put a bit of right angle on my adjustable 75 by 75 beam, which should be all right. And then coming along here, we'll just branch off, put a bracket in the middle, uh, which is the way the desks are anyway. They've got one of these like, see that thing there, left and right side. That's what the middle one is anyway. So if it's gonna have a middle one, I'll probably just do the same there. So you'll just see one middle, one metal pole there, one metal pole there and the rest will all be um, nice and open hopefully hopefully and uh, what was the other problem yeah so the other problem is I'm still thinking about um, over here so of course uh, when you got no, sh no no shelving no storage you got crap everywhere and uh, at the moment we're still still building once all this is built hopefully I'll be able to put all this stuff away and it'll all be a lot tidier but for now um, yeah, it's a bit of mess, so we move all the mess left, we move all the mess right, it's basically building materials and storage. Anyway, um, if these beams are going to be here, if you can see what's happening there, this beam's going to be straight over the window. 
very undesirable um, still nutting out how to do that because the cupboards from the front up here we want them to square up here we want them to square up here and if you square up here you're going to be over the window so it, there might be a possibility of uh, you know doing a two beams like that but what I decided to do is just do this in sections because if I think of everything uh, all the ones gives me a headache so I'm just going to do section by section start off with this section first get this bolted in get this squared up get this straight get this strong and then I'll branch off and I'll do this section and then I'll branch off and I'll do that section that way all these little challenges that come up one by one I can address them as they kind of come up and um, just take it from there and yeah all right leave your comments down below thanks for watching